Lesson 2, Drawing Geometric Primitives To follow along with this lesson, you will need the code and setup from OpenGL Lesson 1. To begin, open the project that we created in Lesson 1. For this tutorial, we will only change the code between GL Begin and GL End. There are 10 types of geometric primitives in OpenGL, and we will give examples of each displayed in the GLUT window that we saw in Lesson 1. Although our points will have X, Y, and Z coordinates, the z-coordinate will always be zero, and we can ignore it in this lesson. In terms of x and y, our coordinate axes line up like this, with the point 0, 0 in the lower left corner, and 1, 1 in the upper right. This is fundamentally a 2D tutorial, but everything will carry over into 3D. Points are the first primitive that we will cover. To begin, replace these lines of code with these. To describe a primitive, we will always start with a call to GL begin, and end with a GL end call. The remaining lines describe a set of six vertices. The GL points argument signals that the list of vertices should be considered as individual points. So when we run the code, we see this. The points are barely visible since they are single pixels, but we can label their positions like this. More importantly though, we can label them from V0 to V5 in the order they are listed in our program, like this. We can also use these same vertices to draw a set of lines change the GL begin argument to GL lines like this. Then run the code and we get three parallel lines. The argument GL line signals that the vertices should be taken two at a time with a line drawn between each pair. We can continue with the same set of vertices to make triangles, but we will need to change the argument to GL triangles. Now the points are taken in triples and we get this. An interesting thing occurs in this case. If we take the order of the first three vertices, we get a triangle with counterclockwise orientation. With the second three, we get a triangle with clockwise orientation. This will be significant when we get into 3D. Next, we consider triangle strips, which convert a set of vertices into a strip of triangles. Change the GL begin argument to GL triangle strip. Executing the program, we see a single rectangle. However, this is actually a triangle strip, which is composed of triangle facets shown here. These facets allow the strip to bend in 3D. Like triangle strips, quad strips are used to represent surfaces. Change the GL begin argument to GL quad strip, and we see the same rectangle that we saw for the triangle strips when we execute. However, these facets are quadrilaterals, with their orientation given by the first four vertices. Like triangles and quads, we can have strips of simpler line segments. For line strips, we change the argument to GL line strip. Executing the program, we get a path through each of the vertices in order. A line loop is similar to a line strip, except that we also connect the end of the strip to the beginning to form a loop. Change the argument to GL line loop and run the program and we get a closed line strip. We can render individual quadrilaterals with GL quads. Change the argument to GL quads, replace the list of vertices with these, and execute the program. The GL quads argument signals that we take each successive set of four vertices and use them to render oriented quadrilaterals. With four or more vertices, we can get polygons which cross themselves or have concavities. OpenGL requires that all polygons be simple and convex. Simple means that the edges do not cross each other, and convex means that the line segment between any two points in the polygon lies entirely in the polygon. We can go from four-sided polygons to the more general many-sided polygon. Replace the rendering code for the quads with this. The argument GL polygon signals that all vertices are to be considered part of the same polygon, like this. Finally, we have the triangle fan. Set the argument to GL triangle fan and execute the program. This generates the same output as the polygon, however this shape is actually a set of triangle faces which we could use to create non-convex polygons or even curved surfaces. This concludes the lesson.